This is Witches, Bitches, and Dead People with Intuitive Oracle, Jamie Hearn. Jamie stirs the cauldron with witches, shamans, healers, psychics, and mediums who bravely share their power and give you insight into what conversations with dead people really look like. It's probably not what you think. Sometimes hilarious, sometimes macabre, and always informative. Hello and welcome back to Witches, Bitches, and Dead People. I'm Jamie Hearn, and today I'm super excited to chat with Wendy Wonders. Wendy is a Haitian-American, New York-born, but raised in the county of Dade. We were, we were just lamenting about how she's all warm and it's not warm here today. Anyway, intuitive business and manifestation support coach. Wendy also has a medical background as a pediatric nurse for 20 years. God bless you, because that's like, that. in my opinion, that's like one of the hardest jobs ever. <laughs> I'm sure we'll talk about it. But during the height of COVID, she decided it was time to move past self-doubt and fear and reinvent her career that better matched her soul-aligned purpose. Diving deep into spirituality and her intuitive gifts, Wendy and her husband got clear on what they wanted, made a plan, and uprooted their lives in Miami to live a location-independent lifestyle. Awesome! Part of her journey is to be a beacon for those stuck and unfulfilled in moving toward their true life purpose. Wendy has developed and is curating a movement by the name of Evolution of We to help people to evolve into their soul-aligned purpose. Therefore, Wendy Wonders is helping unfulfilled professionals to confidently reinvent their careers by tuning into their soul-aligned purpose. That is like a really big transition from pediatric nursing. So let's start there. What yes. spurred you to make that change? Oh my gosh. Let me first say that, you know, I'm Haitian and anyone that's from the islands, I have parents that, you know, migrated from an island to the States, automatically you have to become a doctor, nurse, lawyer. So <laughs> my mom, oh my, everybody in my family are pretty much in medical field. And so I was destined to be a nurse. I'm really great at it. I'm really good because being an empath and you know, someone who um, is naturally caring and everything is a great fit. But the just the just the ins and out, it becomes really daunting and um, it really did align it kind of aligned with my purpose, but did not. So um, I remember specifically my mom was like, I'm gonna pay for your nursing degree and you can do whatever the hell you want afterwards. I'm like, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Graduated nursing school, went to Florida a &M University um, in Tallahassee and got my, I, I went initially for nursing, quote unquote, to get my bachelor's, but then I quickly changed it to public relations because I felt more like aligned with me. And it's crazy how we like when, when kids are younger, they're like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Hell, I don't want to, I don't even know I want to be like when I was 30. That's when I really was like, okay, I think I got it. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell people like I tell I people like that I now. <laughs> right? My friends, my friends' kids, I'll be like, "What do you guys want to do with your life?" And they're like, "I don't know." I'm like, "I'm just taking a poll because I'm trying to figure it out too." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So yes, being a nursing time flies. Next thing you know, ten years, fifteen, now twenty years. But the perfect thing happened. Um, I always love traveling, so I did travel nursing. But on a, the, the 2020 happened and me and my husband, we were deciding, okay, we need to transition because we're, I feel like me and him been together for 11 years, but we lived like 10 years, like every year is a transition, right? <laughs> <laughs> so initially we were like, you know, let's do travel nursing and let's get an RV. Let's do that and travel the world, you know, travel the States and everything. But then something like changed that, um, like derailed it. And I went to YouTube University. I'm like, why don't we go to Bali, Indonesia, right? That's cheaper. <laughs> and so you, you just learn to go through the rabbit hole. And 
really dig down inside and be like, can I see myself doing nursing for another 40 years or 30 years? And the answer was no. And then I had to be like, okay, what is the recurrent theme of my life? And the recurrent theme is me talking to other nurses, talking to other professionals that feel stuck, unfulfilled, me being like, yeah, F it, you know, do it. What do you really want to do? Like me doing that. And that's what brings me to become a manifestation support coach because I'm always talking about manifestation, crazy stuff always happening to me where people literally call me a witch. Hence, that's why I'm here. Like, <laughs> witches, bitches, and dead people. I'm like, I can relate to all three. <laughs> you are here because you're supposed to be. You, like, yes. It's perfect. Yes. <laughs> so you're really demonstrating to other professionals, like, what can happen if you take the leap and do what you're really called to do? Yes, absolutely. Let me tell you, Jamie, like I'm here in Mexico because I put out to the universe that simply like what I want my life to feel like, like I want it to be adventurous, fun, exciting. I want it to be purposeful. I want it to be like flexible so we can still um, travel um, I wanted to be like, and then um, I think about where I wanted to be. We traveled to Mexico before. I'm like, we was in the States, right? And I'm like, I want to go back to Mexico, apply the car. I love it there. And I'm here just because I, we followed the feeling and opportunities came where it brought us back to Mexico. If I would have told myself a month from now, I'll be here, be <laughs> here for a while, I would have been like, you crazy. So it's, yeah, I'm really living the, the I'm really living um, a life of following the breadcrumbs that the universe gives me. I preach that all the time. It's following the breadcrumbs. That's awesome. So what what is your advice to people who are like, I, I can't find the breadcrumbs. How do I know what, what I'm supposed to follow? Right. That means you're disaligned like, or you're not open to receiving the message. Like think about, I think about the universe, God, whatever you believe in. They're always like yelling at us like, I'm trying to give you this opportunity, but you're just scared. They're always talking to us. But if we like quiet our minds, think about what are you doing? You're happiest. Um, if you just like, I play like the manifestation game. So I'll say, I want to see a yellow, I don't know, bug car and see how long it takes me to, to see it. Then I can gauge, you know, am I here in the universe? Am I into myself? And the real answer to that question is look inside yourself and get acquainted with your intuition because that's all the breadcrumbs are. It's your intuitive gift. That's your GPS system guidance towards your purpose. And unfortunately, a lot of people are not in tune with that. Well, yeah. And I think for a bunch of reasons, like it's conditioned out of us. And mm-hmm. we're so busy and there's so much overstimulation and so many other things. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So when did you first recognize that you were following this inner voice? Oh or when my did God. you first hear it? Like, tell us about the history of it. Oh my gosh. You know, what? it's crazy all my life ever since, I have two incidences that really stand out to me. One, I was in Miami playing Nintendo, right? When it first came out, I was aging myself. (laughs) Playing Nintendo. And then I kind of like go into the meditative state. I didn't know what it was at that time. But now I know. A meditative state. And I remember myself being another person. Mind you, I don't know if this, this is video podcast. I am a Black woman with locks in her hair okay and what I envisioned is a little girl I was nine at the time a little girl maybe a year or two younger than me but she was Caucasian she was white with long blonde hair curly but I was her and I was pressing the microwave button and I came to and I lost and my mom went in the kitchen she's like Wendy did you turn on the microwave and I'm like what I'm like um how long (laughs) is it going for she's like 30 minutes i'm like what what's in it she's like nothing that was the moment i was like something is going on (laughs) (laughs) and i remember it like i just like it just happened yesterday 
So I knew that something was bigger past me. I'm like, is this my past life? Is this someone I knew? I, I, to this day, I don't know what it was, but I think it was just, um, we can jump into parallels. Girl, I don't know. <laughs> it was a glitch. <laughs> yeah, it's a glitch. That was one. A second thing is that, and during Florida a and University, they have a radio station, 90.5. And I always laugh. I was like, it'll be fun to be an on-air personality. You know, maybe I should try out or something. But every semester, I would see the call out and I wouldn't try. And then I'll feel like defeated. And I'm like, why are you feeling defeated? I didn't even try. So one time I saw the sign on the pole. I could still envision it. And I was like, God, whatever. If I try out to be an on-air personality at 90.5 on FAMU radio station, like that's it, right? I will do whatever. I, I made a promise. I said, I will do whatever opportunity you put in front of me that aligns with what I'm trying to achieve. Jamie, I got the part on 90.5 and I had a great time. Great. I'm like, I was so. <laughs> So from that moment on, I would just play and, you know, I would show interest in different things and I would get things like this and family and friends would be like, yeah, Wendy, you get everything you want. And now I could put a name to it. It's men of you, know, as you get older, you put a kind of name to it. You fall in love with Abraham, I fell in love with Abraham Hicks, um, Reverend Ike, um, just all these people. And I'm like, I feel validated. <laughs> So <laughs> that goes to show you that they're always there. Your ancestors, the universe is always there to guide you. But sometimes you just have to wake up. Now I, now I feel like a conscious, like I'm woke, right? But yeah, you got to wake up. It's an awakening. And um, it's exciting. And my job as a light worker is kind of awaken the light in other people so they can live crazy lives too. <laughs> I think they're aligned lives. Like it's perfect. Yeah. I can totally see you being a fantastic radio personality. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but I have a question. I mean, they had ra radio stations were really popular when I was in college too, but do they do those anymore? Like, does that happen? <laughs> I don't know if they do anymore. I think they do. Be I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I got what I needed out of it. <laughs> I love it. Um, so you work with clients to start to integrate some of these tools into their own lives, right? Right, right. To tap in, because sometimes you have a, I don't want to call it like a midlife crisis, but I guess it is what it is, right? <laughs> it's a week, you know. <laughs> Right, but that's what people call it. But sometimes the things that you do does not reflect who you are. And I hate when people like, yeah, Wendy, she's a nurse, and that's that's the label they gave me. No, I'm more than nurse. Nursing is just like my side hustle. It's just what I do, but it doesn't really align with my multi-dimensional self. And how I can label it is basically a manifestation of being a light worker. So. In the time of somebody's life, and we're always going through different lifetimes, I feel like in this life, there's pivot points. And a lot of people miss those transitions because when you're at a crossroads, and this is what I specialize in, crossroads transition. When you're at a crossroads, most people cannot see both sides or they get fear of moving where they want to move, but they go to a path that they're used to. So it's just at that time, identifying your transitions, knowing what you want, and then reaching deep inside yourself and be like, what feels right? And having the courage to freaking go down the yellow brick road. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then find the wizard. And then you find out that you are the wizard. That's well, the thing. And I think that you mentioned probably the biggest thing that I've noticed in people is fear. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fear. Fear is, I call it like the coworker that you have to work with. I mean, they're super smart, you know, um, you don't really work with them all the time. yeah, <laughs> you work with them. They're there, but you, you need them. Fear is always there. Like you, there's duality. 
right? There's happy, there's sad, there's duality. That is a universal law. So in order there to be, what's the opposite of fear? Like, I guess, uh, 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 yes, love. And that's the highest vibration, love and gratitude, girl. I hold on to those feelings like, <laughs> like they're like, my my children <laughs> because that <laughs> brings a higher vibration and that's the only way to to get the messages that the universe is giving to, to you is you have to match up with the vibration of it and love gratitude is the language that people miss and it's easy as that i guess because it's so easy that's how people miss it and then they feel what they don't know well and, and we're really anchored in this 3d experience with the ego driving, it's mm. sometimes hard to make the transition into spiritual guidance. Yes, that's when you come out messed up because you have that ego. It's like Wendy, you tried this again. It's not gonna work. Well, girl, let me see. Let me let me watch you for a little bit. Mm-hmm. I told you so. You are gonna fail? I told you. <laughs> so it's always gonna be. <laughs> that's how. That's how this. Chrissy Peter in my head, she talks, you know, but she's always there and you have to have duality. And sometimes fear is good because they tell you when you need to run or when, you know, that fear, the, the, the fight or flight. Right. You need, you need that fear. It's just, it's just um, looking at fear and, and finding out where the fear comes from and addressing that. That's a big help. It's just like acknowledge the fear ask the questions. Where is this coming from? Is it coming from my past experiences? Is it coming from somebody else? Yeah, that's a big one. Is it coming from something I heard? Maybe in social media. Where does this fear come from? And then you like, is this fear? Or is this a uh, false evidence appearing real? I bet you heard that one before, right? Yeah. yeah. So right. when people come to you and they know that there's a block or a fear or something they need to work around. How do you help them identify what that is? Because sometimes it's hard to articulate what our fears are. Right. So basically I, I walk them to the process of what, what are you doing when you get this trigger? They're like, oh, I'm starting to sit down and write my, I don't know, my business, uh, my business idea. Okay, what, where is it in your body? Is it your stomach? Is it your heart? Is it your throat? Because I'm real big on the chakras too. I'm a um, Reiki. I do, I do Reiki, but I do that personal. I don't monetize that. <laughs> and so they tell me, and then we look at what chakra is, is blocked. Or I ask questions like, where does this feel, Where do you think this fear comes from? Where did you hear this? Show me the proof that this fear is fact. I want proof. Write it down. And they can't write it down. Okay, now give me proof that you've been through a situation and you got through it. Give me that story. And they can give me stories of incidences, situations, people that they pull through. I'm like, okay, so I don't have any facts of, you know, this fear that you have here, but I have this. So let's let's go ahead and do, you've done this before, you know? So it's just like walking people through and changing perspective of what fear is. When I think that that's one of the most critical things when people are on this journey is to identify someone like you who's going to walk the path with them. Because let's face it, if we could do it ourselves, we would have already. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> But mentors are really critical and finding a mentor that vibe, vibes with you and understands the path you're on is, it just supercharges your process, I think. It does. And you feel validated. Like I have a coach either where it's like one-on-one or like YouTube University or some type of like learning. I have a coach for almost every aspect of my life, girl. Okay. Cause I just need the validation, the motivation to get through I have to make sure that, you know, because everything I do is intuitive or um, like getting constant downloads. So it's like, is this really, you know, your podcast is called Witches, Bitches, and, and Dead People, right? So it's like, is this really real? Like, <laughs> is manifestation really, like, I mean, sometimes I'll be like, like checking them, like, okay, ancestors and universe, 
Let's see what you can do to this. <laughs> right. Give me a sign that, you know, I'm on the right path. And you know what they do? By a person, I'm going to get deep here, Jamie and Tyler. Kind of, my intuitive um, thing, and this is what I try to teach people too. It's not like what I know, it's everybody has a different gift or talent or a different way that universal the ancestor speaks to them. So the way that I get my messages, and it's so crazy, girl, is through technology. Like I would say something, the 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 the, the TV would say something, or like I'll get a te- like through technology, which is crazy. So my job, and you know, it's good to have a coach or somebody outside of you, is to kind of give you perspective and kind of validate what you're going through and kind of like be the bumper. You know, when you pay like um bowling and they have the bump the kids have the bumper thing. Yeah. I thought I was a good bowler for a long time. I did not realize when I was younger they done put the bumper thing. I I had shirts saying that I won, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> the real coach and guide is there to be the, the bumper guard. So you you know to mitigate that your fear or your you know quote unquote lessons. I, I hate to call it like you know losing or you know it's everything is either a win or a lesson. I love that perspective. Oh, which one? The everything is either a win or a lesson. Yes, everything's a lesson because sometimes when things happen to us, you're like, "Oh my gosh, why is it happened to me? Why? Why did I break up with that? Why did I? You know, me and my, my relationship broke down, and I'm single now. I don't know what to do." But you forgot that a month ago you was praying for you know the universe of God to like bring life into your relationship and if it's not for you you want to let it go you forgot about that right <laughs> right <laughs> yeah you always get what you want that's why when you're really vibrating high and really in tune with your higher self and the universe it's really important to to have that love and gratitude and that clarity of where you want to go and so that's why having a coach and mentor you know to help you along the way is it's imperative so that's super, it's just, it re- reminds me of a funny experience I often have. Um, the skewed perception of what you remember, right? Everyone, <laughs> when somebody passes away, they never want to see anything bad about dead people. Oh my and, God, I say the same thing. I say the same thing, go ahead. And I'm just like, what do you mean? He was a dick in real life? He's a dick when he's dead too. Like, right? <laughs> I'm glad you have that perspective. I say the same thing. I'm like, now who's I? I want to go to a funeral of somebody who was not a great person and and really be like, y'all really gonna lie like this? <laughs> That's all we know. <laughs> That would be me. <laughs> I got you in know, that corner. <laughs> right? You know, that's why I draw the line. Like, that's one thing. I'm really intuitive. Like, smelling, hearing, feeling. I don't want to see no dead person. Okay, I do not want to see spirits. And you know, sometimes I feel like they tested me. Like, oh, shoot, I think she's ready. I'm like, yeah, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Just talk to me through phone, whatever. It, whatever, I'm not ready. <laughs> through the computer. <laughs> It could be, it's, it's really, it's really wild. It's, I, I should, and that's what I'm trying to do with my like Instagram social media is really be the testament. Um, and that's what got me to this work. I don't want to miss it. Um, you do you know what uh, Abraham Hicks, Esther Hicks? I know of them. I don't, I don't know a lot about their work though. Got it. So they wrote, um, they're the whole premise of like the secret or whatever. They, uh, Esther and Jerry, their husband and wife, Jerry since passed away, but they wrote the book. A book of Law of Attraction. And so you can look on YouTube. She has like clips of her teachings. Her conferences are really good. So she, um, to make it short, Esther, she gets downloads to quote unquote like universe that comes through as Abraham, right? And at first it sounds crazy because I told my husband he was nuts for reading this book. I could not comprehend. And here I am, like, like almost kind of like Abraham, but I don't have like a universe talking and saying, hey, I'm I'm Jimmy. I'm going to be talking, you know. But anyway, next heard. week, girl, I'm calling you if it happens. 
But Abraham was like a lot of people, and notice this thing, like a lot of people, celebrities, people that, you know, are well off, they always kind of like allude to and say like, oh, I believe in law of attraction, manifestation, and all this stuff. They always like, I have a hint, everyone have a hint of it. But nobody, Abraham or Esther, right, says like nobody really talks about like manifestation. Nobody really said, call it out what it is. And as soon as she said this, I was like, I'm going to be the manifestation. You know, I'm going to say that, you know, manifestation works. and da, da, da. So this is me like being a flag carrier for manifestation and how it really works because it really does. And I try to document, I call it my manifestation in action. I try to document everything that's happened in my life because it's really freaking wild. So when is your book coming out? <laughs> girl i gotta add it to the many list that i'm trying to do okay found <laughs> i want to do a podcast together so that that that'll probably be coming um pretty soon but um yeah i do have a lot to say i guess because i feel seen i feel seen with you <laughs> oh that's awesome Um, You have a lot of really important stuff to share and you give permission to people who are not necessarily existing in the spiritual fold to follow that and step out of the, that box that (laughs) my kid was, (laughs) I said to him something about, you know, don't put yourself in a box. He goes, put myself in a box. I'm going to burn the box. I was like, you run with that. I love it. But you really are giving people permission to step into that version of themselves that they may have been shy about sharing. Yeah. I mean, why not? When you think about it, everybody's in their own little world. Like, nobody cares about you. Everybody's in their own little world. And if you, I love the book, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People, because, one, we are... I, everyone I see, I see a part of myself, so I treat it as if. And then if you also think about the hollow friends that influence people is people like people like them and then people like people that they're aspiring to be. So if you fall into any of those two categories of the people that you're trying to impact, you can make magic. And it's so important. That's why I'm on this like journey of just helping people just align with their higher self and their purpose because people are maybe looking at you as inspiration, they'd be like, oh my gosh, I can do it too. And that's all we here to do is live. And that's your purpose. It's not no grand, like, I got to save the world. No, you got to save your world. Therefore, you save the world. Awesome. <laughs> so I, I could totally chat with you all day long. You are so much fun. <laughs> Thank you. Same here. So you'll have to come back when your podcast or book or wherever you're coming up next. Come back and talk about it. And I love the channels. I have family in New York. So when I'm up there, hey, you never know. We can hang. I, yeah. I, I love where, where, where people love me. I love it. <laughs> well, where can people find you if they want to learn more about you? Well, I have several social media platforms, right? It's, it's crazy. Um, but Instagram is at the Wendy Wonders. Uh, Instagram is uh, at the Wendy Wonders. And I also have YouTube, which is Wendy Wonders on YouTube. I think that's it for now. I think Facebook, but I'm probably on, on there since I got hacked. But um, <laughs> Instagram and definitely um, Facebook. And my website is evolutionofwe.net, evolutionofwe.net, evolutionofwe.net. Because when you involve, we all involve, it's all about the evolution of we. And that's what I'm curating is just our evolution because it's, it's a, a separation is happening in our conscious world right now. And yeah, we need some support. <laughs> awesome. We will include links to all of those so people can find you with one easy click. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'll see you all next week on Witches, Bitches, and Dead People. Peace and badass magic. Thank you for listening to Witches, Bitches, and Dead People with Jamie Hearn. 
If you like what you heard, please subscribe, rate, and review at Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in. 